Welcome, Phoenix fans, to our very first Cumberland Coaches Show. This is Sports Information Director Kyle Allen, and today we're talking to head football coach Tim Mathis, head women's volleyball coach Hannah Vatican, head men's basketball coach Jeremy Lewis. Stay tuned and check out what they have going on. Welcome, Phoenix fans. Today we've got head coach Tim Mathis in the building. Coach, how's everything been going? It's been a crazy, crazy month and a half since we canceled sports. It, it's it's been been crazy is a good word, interesting or whatever. We actually got in three spring practice practices. So between the I guess the, the all the wet weather beforehand, the tornado, and then all this, we ended up getting three practices in. But it's you know, now that school's out, it's basically the same for us because we don't see them all summer anyway. So, well, so and what are you guys doing now? I know you guys worked on some facility upgrades. Talk about a little bit of the things that you guys are doing now. We kind of opened a Phoenix Construction Company, and, and we've got a back a back little meeting room area that we're turning into a theater style seating uh, meeting room, and we'll have we've got four tiers to it, and we're going to have seats in there about. 36 to 40 seats and uh, we've been doing that so that's kept us kind of occupied and uh, as far as here here on campus uh, being able to do something for sure and going into a little bit of stuff that would normally happen in the spring like you guys weren't able to finish the spring practice and knowing that you guys graduated your quarterback what are some things that y'all have looked at doing to try and get everybody on on pace and and ready to go for the fall well it's uh Last week, the offense started uh, kind of Zoom meeting stuff, and defense started th this past week. But just we're trying to just do a lot of mental reps and basically install and go through all the offense and, and get those guys as prepared as we can because that's probably offensively, that's probably our biggest areas with having, a, you know, whoever's going to be the quarterback is going to be somebody that has no game experience uh, going into uh, next year. And so you just want to get them as mentally prepared. But all the other guys, it's just, a, you know, same deal. Get them mentally prepared. That's really all you can do anyway yeah. uh, with this situation. We're, everybody's on the same boat, so you just try to uh, – get mental preparation where they're, they're have meetings and every Friday they're having a, you know, kind of a test. They're basically in school. They're in football yeah. school. So they're, they'll have a quiz or a test every Friday to make sure they're comprehending uh, what they're doing. I don't know. We might give them virtual up downs or something. If they fail the test, watch them on zoom, do up now. I don't, you know, who knows what call their parents and let them slap them on the head or mm -hmm. something. But, um, you just try to make the best you you know the best situation you can make. You can't control it, so I'm a big believer in you know you can only control, manipulate, and worry about stuff you can control. We can't control what's going on, but we can make do with what's going on, yeah. and hopefully, hopefully, what we're doing is going to help. For sure, and all these kids, of course, have had to have this big curveball with everything going online. How did they they handle that transition? I think for you know for the most part, uh, overall, just uh, I've as grades came in, I think we handled it uh, pretty well. Um, you know, it was something most kids don't sign up. We do have the option here on campus. Some of our classes are online, but, you know, most kids don't sign up for that, so that was an adjustment. Of course, the professors were in the same boat. Most of them didn't sign up for yeah. it either. So, But I think they handled it, it pretty well. And, um, you know, it's just, it, to me, I think it, it kind of talks to their character or whatever if they are able to handle it. It's kind of a, a kid that you'd be able to count on because, you know, again, football, life lessons, what a life lesson this was. And you're going to get curveballs in your life. How do you deal with it? And I think we – I think overall we've dealt with it pretty good. 
Good. Looking into some of the recruiting stuff, what are some stuff that you and your staff look at when you're looking at recruits? Um, and, you know, that area, again, was kind of crazy and uh, different um, in the sense that obviously high schools didn't get to have their spring practices, and that's usually an evaluation period. And, and more importantly, we didn't get to go out in the spring and visit kids and visit high schools. And so we've had to rely a lot on, uh, you know, getting in contact with coaches, huddle links and whatever, and also, you know, not being able to have camps this summer. You know, some kids you just want to – they look pretty good, but you want to give them the eyeball test, and that it's not going to happen. So you just really got to rely on – and it's something we do anyway. You got to rely on game tape. That's mm-hmm. if – to see if they uh, can do it. But some, you know, there's some kids that necessarily don't play in the type of offense you you think they might be real good. And that's that's, that's the biggest obstacle because you usually like to have them on campus for a camp to see if they can do what what we want them to do. But um, other than that, it's just dive into the huddle like we normally do. And, and, you know, we're having – Zoom meetings and stuff to uh, go through. Um, we're in the process right now, of ranking who at every position, who who's the best or whatever. And you know, there's always be some that come up in the fall, but we try to make the spring the uh, kind of use a ba- a bass term at reference. We're gonna put all the fish in the boat right now, and then we'll start throwing out the smaller ones and 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 call it down to these are the ones we want, but. So that's what we're doing right now, this big evaluation process. And I was just looking at your 2D from last year, a couple minutes ago. Um, You guys are going to graduate a lot of guys, um, so you're going to have a lot of people to replace. And talking about the recruiting class, who are some of the kids and some kids that you have on campus now that are going to step into those roles and and take over? As far as the ones on campus, we, uh, you know, you you look at who you lost, I guess the biggest We'll start offensively first. You know, the biggest obviously is quarterback. What's going to happen? We have we have two young kids that were here, um, Way Cartwright and Zach Pemberton. That you know, going into spring practice, they were battling um, to see who was going to be the starter. That's still going to happen in the fall, mm-hmm. and, and you know, we'll give them all reps. We'll have we we actually have a, uh, two young quarterbacks coming in too that we think can potentially do it as well, and. I'm a big believer in, in the whole finding out who can do it is competition is the best coach anyway. So if we can get better, to, you know, just do our job recruiting-wise and just let the competition take place, we'll be fine. You know, this going to be – obviously we're not going to have anybody there that just has had any experience, but um, we're real excited about those guys because we – think both of them can do it and probably this year they both will play we're it's i'm not a big believer and it's just got to be this guy um you know unless you just don't have anybody behind them that that can do do it as well but i think both of these guys are capable and and we'll play them both and and whichever gives us the best opportunity you know probably get more reps but at the other positions uh you know our main running back position. I think I think uh, Traylon Shepard will carry more of the load uh, this year, being a freshman last year. But uh, he did great as a freshman, and he'll carry most of the load at, at uh, the B back position. And then everywhere else, uh, we have some young guys in the offensive line that that are going to step up and give us depth. But you know we only lost. Uh, graduated one that played last year on the offensive line so we got most of them coming back we got some young guys that we purposely redshirted that that'll be pretty good players and you know the other skill positions a back and receiver were pretty deep and uh it's great to have uh Tolliver yeah. coming back at receiver this year he he got uh hurt that second game and got uh, the medical red shirt so that's a huge deal for us uh for him to come back because he's, I mean, he's probably the best receiver in the conference. And um, so that'll be huge. And then defensively, you know, if you just kind of looked at it, you're like, man, you lost a lot. But we, we really only lost a lot up front. Mm-hmm. That front seven. The, you know, but the back end, linebackers, and, and even though we lost, uh, you know, Tyler Tate, who was a great linebacker for us, 
we're pretty deep at linebacker and we're pretty you know we got everybody returning in the secondary and we got guys that played uh jace caps is coming back uh, morgan cates is coming back um we got Tamim uh, Adarache, who was hurt last year, uh, that didn't get the plays coming back. So we, we're going to be pretty – we're pretty excited about what we have up front. We don't think we're going to have that major of a drop-off. And we were pretty good up front last For year. Sure. But I think we have – I think we're going to have the same good problem that we had last year. We're going to have a lot of depth on that defensive line. And, um, you know, I have to be some of the young guys that, that step in and, and play for us. But – the key, the key defensively for us is just getting uh, quality backups in the secondary, and that's going to be some of these young pups that come in, and you don't really know till you know yeah. till they get here of who that's going to be. But we're excited about the ones that are coming, and and some of those guys are going to have to, you know, sometimes you don't want to rely on real young guys playing. If, if if we get the program where we want it, we should never have a freshman play, but. You know that's that's probably not going to be the case, and it is what it is. It's it's. I want the best eleven to play, and and if the freshmen's one of the best eleven, they're going to play. And revisiting something last year that we haven't really had the chance to talk about is you coached the inaugural NAI senior game. Talk about that experience. What was that like? That I mean, it was it was absolutely uh, pretty cool. I was. Uh, and we talked about it at our, our national meeting uh, this January. I was kind of skeptical going into it because didn't know how you know how well it was going to be set up or whatever. But um, it, it it was a phenomenal experience. They did a great job. We uh, we had a blast. Uh, Savannah is a great place to to, to have the event. It and the, there were some great football players there and and. You know, we got to have four of our guys go there and play, and and uh, Rucker was a leading Rucker and was a leading rusher. Kendall was the second leading rusher, uh, and then Tyler Tate and, and Aaron White were the top two defensive players on our side of the ball. So you know, our guys shined at that event, and all the coaches were like, "Man, that those are great, great players and all that." But I loved it because our side on the east side. Um, the western side, it was just one coaching staff from uh, I can't even remember where it from. I think it was uh, Carroll College or whatever, but the whole staff. So, but our staff was uh, coaches from all over the country, and it that it was awesome. I, I to be honest with you, and I text uh, text one yesterday. I I got eight new friends and and, and had a bond with them and. and that was the biggest thing I liked was getting to share it with, with other people. And it would have been great for our whole staff to go there, and I'd have loved that too. But it was it was fun and unique that, you know, there were people from all over the country that did it. And we came, you know, you come together in four days and put an offense and defense in, and and we battled. And, and it was it, it was a good show of uh, NAI talent, and there were, there were NFL scouts there, XFL scouts there, so the kids got to, you know, they got to show their talents and, and for the next level, I have no idea if if any of those got to sign free agent contracts or not. I, you know, I don't know that, but I thought it was a unbelievable experience that I hope they continue mm -hmm. uh, to do down there because it, it's a great it's a great finisher for kids if if they're invited for that, that they get to, uh, to go experience and hopefully because Tolliver was supposed to go last year he got he got injured in Kent so hopefully he's able to go this year and we have some other kids that are able to go because it's just it's a great showcase and you know there's not a better place than the southeast I, other than Nashville the one place I'd like to go visit Savannah it's it's a fun place to be coach talk about the conference a little bit yeah this you just completed your second year in this conference it's very tough um what is it have you learned anything new playing in this conference that you've had to kind of carry into into this season uh, the bit i don't know if you you learn anything new other than it's just you know this past year they when they realigned our divisions they might they made our division almost murderer's row really, really uh, putting in university of Cumberland and pikeville into it thomas moore comes into it, it was a top 25 division three program 
And not to mention that we played Kaiser, who right made Kaiser, who made who made <laughs> makes the the playoffs. You know, our crossover game wasn't even no joke. It's just you know the one thing you got in our conference is there's not many games where you can just sit there and say, okay, we're going to win this one. Mm-hmm. Every one of them, you got to battle for it, and it's. I think that's the mindset. We kind of got off to a really good start, but I think you know the mindset of kids. Is, you got to have that same mindset every week, and that's it's a learning process. Because even though we graduated, you know, several last year, we, we were still kind of a young team that hadn't a lot of the kids hadn't played a lot of snaps. And you know, I think carrying over into this year, I think they've learned that every week you can't just assume that okay, we're ranked. 21, 22, or whatever, we've arrived, and we haven't. You know, you don't arrive until the end of the season. And, and you, you need to stay focused the whole time because, you know, you take one on the chin. The, the problem is the bell might ring, you get to go to your corner, but when they come out, they're coming out swinging. The yeah. next the next, <laughs> that next that round's a pretty tough one too. And and you just – it's it, it's biggest thing I think you learn is – and the kids need to learn is – the mental toughness of it because it's there's not an easy game it there's not i mean even you could point to some to say well they're not they're not the the top of the league even the crossover games but you know you look at during the season well they might have beaten the team that beat us or what every game you know it's a cliche that a lot of people use but our conference is kind of like the sec yeah it even the bottom feeders of that you know vanderbilt and Mississippi State and Ole Miss, they, they're beating people all the time, too. South Carolina's beating people all the time, too. So, And some people might say they're not very good, but they are. Yeah. And, and our conference is, is the same way. You, you can go from – it doesn't matter, Georgetown, Camsville, Bethel, obviously Lindsey Wilson, Cumberlands, Pikeville, they – we're capable of beating each other every every week. You know, you know two years ago, we – we put Lindsey Wilson out of the playoffs, and you know, on paper, we probably we shouldn't have beat him, but that's that's what happens, and that's the way you got to look at it. It's you got to be mentally prepared each week to go at it. Mm-hmm. Well, coach, is there anything else you want to talk about? Not really. Just I want to get back to eating those cookies that were in there, and uh, you know, I think I think those are. We need more cookies. If 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 you guys are going to watch this, send more cookies. We're we're in quarantine and we've been quarantined against cookies. It's a great American conspiracy. Send cookies. Send Kool Aid. Send us some Pantor's pizza. Coach Pavin will not buy us enough Pantor's pizza, so we need that. Um, but in all seriousness, guys, we're working hard to getting back to. Uh, getting back to normal, whatever that might be, we're going to do it. Our, our conference is working hard, and I just look forward. I really look forward to seeing the kids again and, and getting back on campus and, you know, hopefully sooner than later that, that we get back to some type of normalcy. Well, Coach, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. We'll get you on again soon. Thank you. And we're here with head women's volleyball coach Hannah Vatican. Hannah, it's been a crazy first three months. Yes. Talk about that experience. What has it been like? It definitely nothing I ever thought would be the, where I'm at. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I've probably had visions of being a head coach for a very long time, but never did I assume that day one would be, hey, you can't practice, you can't see your kids, and everyone's home, mm-hmm. and uh, you can't go look at anyone either. So it's definitely been a challenge, um, but I've also seen it kind of as an opportunity to create something new. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, I think those that keep looking forward are going to be the ones that are more successful come the fall or whenever we're able to get back out on the court. Now, your athletes, of course, had to overcome a lot this spring, mm-hmm. and they did very well academically. How did they How did they handle that situation? Uh, I think pretty well. I think they spoke – I mean, their actions speak to who they are as individuals and as a team, and they really kind of took the challenge and kind of accepted where they were at. And they're really good about going, here's the scenario, here's the reality, this is how we're going to overcome these obstacles. And I think they did a really good job. They communicate well to begin with and they work well with their professors. And so there wasn't a whole lot of disadvantage to going online, just a matter of adjusting appropriately and getting a little more organized. But getting to work in, from home in your pajamas is kind of like a college experience in its own. Now, going into that a little bit, you guys had to be a little innovative with 
your workouts and how you guys are communicating and what you guys are doing. Can you talk about what you guys have done? Mm -hmm. So um, Coach Levi's been amazing, our strength coach. And um, he, right from day one, was willing to kind of adjust and work with me. Mm -hmm. I called him almost the Tuesday after we had sent him all home. I said, we got to keep going. Uh, we can't stop. And so he created an at-home workout that was pretty specific for us based on what we could do without weights and bars and space. Mm -hmm. And uh, he created that. So on Mondays and Wednesdays, we met as a team via Zoom, which kind of allowed me to check in on everyone, see them, uh, make sure they were all doing okay. And then I also asked our incoming freshmen to jump on since I knew they weren't getting into the gym. They weren't having any club volleyball opportunity either. And so, you know, we do a question of the week or I asked my seniors to be what they wish they knew as freshmen. Um, it's kind of some get to know you, some icebreakers and um, allow Levi. He would do an hour session and uh, we'd get through the first workout. We'd have some parents get on with us and they'd get through the yoga warm up and they're like, wait, we're, we're not done. And um, I came out sweating every time going, I don't understand how this is so hard in a eight by eight room with a computer. For so sure. he did a great job with it. And I think they enjoyed it. We stopped doing that this week. And so they're now on to, um, they've got three other options. He's gotten on Rack Performance. He's got his Instagram page that he's been putting stuff on. And then he's also sent them the summer workouts. So the girls have three ways to continue getting better. And him and I have both talked to them about what their goals are for the fall, no matter what that looks like. Now talking about recruiting a little bit, mm -hmm. recruiting had to have changed some. Mm -hmm. Of course, um, what are some things that you did or do you guys already have everybody pretty much yeah. lined up before all this happened? We were really pretty lucky. We had our incoming class committed before. Um, we got one kid in right before everything shut down from North Carolina. Mm -hmm. She flew in, her and her father, and uh, they got to go down to Broadway. They met Kathy Lee, um, which I think is a signing factor. I've got to send her a shirt. She doesn't know me or us, but, you know, we'll make that work. Yeah. And um, so we were done. We have 14. I'm still communicating with a few kids who may be um, some varsity contention, but at this point in time, I'm pretty happy with what we've brought coming in. And that, that's that been nice, not having to stress out about who hasn't been able to get on campus and who hasn't been able to see us and meet the team and get on the court and play. So for 21, I've just reached out to a lot of kids. Um, I've done a lot of Zoom meetings. I probably do one phone call a day almost with recruits, just getting to know them, talking about the program. Um, kind of hearing what they're doing, where, how they're kind of overcoming this, what their teams are looking like. And we've talked from everyone here. I've probably done three or four Tennessee kids, um, and then we just kind of branch out to overseas. I've talked to kids in Italy and Turkey and all that. So just kind of placing it out. We only graduate four, five. Five, one's a manager, but five, four players. And so um, there's not really a large graduating class that I've got to stress about filling. Now, what are some of the things that you look for in your recruits? Are you looking for the intangibles? Are you looking for the physical ability? Mm -hmm. What are some of those things you're looking for? Um, depends on the position, but definitely a mindset. Um, you know, I'm definitely the coach that wants you to come in, and it's kind of a, you know, dog-eat-dog -dog world. Mm -hmm. you, you've got to come in, and you've got to want to be able to swing first and then kind of step and go, okay, well now where? Um, so look for kids who are pretty aggressive, um, in any position who come in and understand that defense is just as important as the offensive side of things. Uh, they've got to be coachable. And then um, they've just got to be solid individual women who are, you know, ready to kind of learn and grow and um, blend in here at Cumberland and kind of continue to be bettering themselves both on and off the court. So I tell every recruit and all the girls who are in our program have heard the spiel that, you know, we're going to coach you hard here at Cumberland. You know, we're not going to cuss you out. We'll not belittle you. But at the end of the day, there's going to be some practices where you go home and you're like, that sucked. Um, you know, coach really came down hard on me today. And at the end of the day, you know, me and my staff are back in the office looking at, okay, she didn't get it. Is it because we're asking her to do something she physically can't do? Or do we just need to change our approach? Mm -hmm. So. And one of those other things that you just kind of touched on mm -hmm. is one of your first tasks was finding out who is going to be with you, who your staff is going to be. Mm -hmm. What was that like? Who are your, your new staff, your, mm -hmm. who's your new assistant coach, your new GA? Yeah, so it was definitely daunting mm -hmm. in the midst of everything. Hey, you've got a new job. Hey, a tornado rips through. Hey, your girls are going home. <laughs> and by the way, find some people to get here. So um, we've hired both an assistant and a graduate assistant. Um, my assistant coach is going to be Caleb, and I'm probably going to butcher his last name, but it's 
Bonaventure, I believe, or he'll correct me later. And um, he comes to us from Greenville, Illinois, and he's been working on the men's side for a minute. Um, I believe he played at Emmanuel College, but he's a setter. And so setting is definitely probably one of my weakest coaching skills, just because I never played it. I never had to set. So I can coach you through it, but at the end of the day, I can't go, hey, in a game, I used to do this. And so I'm hoping that that's what he can bring to the table and really allow um, allow me to lean on him on that side of things and go, how can we set this offense up to be more successful? I hired Ivan, I won't pronounce his last name because he's from Serbia, but he um, finished competing at Briarcliff last year and um, he is an outside six rotation. So that again is another one of those fillers where he can kind of help balance out. I was a middle right side. And so um, we've got all three kind of positions, defense kind of all wrapped into us as a staff and again hoping that they can bring something fresh to the table that um, maybe we haven't seen here at Cumberland in a minute and just kind of a different perspective and so um, and just a little bit about it different attitude we haven't had a male coach in the gym for a mile for a minute and uh, our girls are excited um, they may not like it at the end of the day who knows um, but it, we're pretty excited to see what they can come in Caleb will be here in June and Ivan will hopefully get here in July okay. and uh, we'll be able to roll with both of them and let's get into the conference a little bit. There's mm-hmm. going to be three new teams, Martin Methodist, Freed Hardeman, and Bethel. Mm-hmm. What do you know about them? How are they going to compete in, in our conference, which is arguably one of the toughest in the nation? Mm-hmm. So we played all three of them last year. Um, we did beat Bethel and Freed Hardeman. Uh, we split with Martin Methodist, who actually did get to go to the national tournament. Mm-hmm. So um, we're not bringing in bad teams by any stretch of the imagination all three of them are very competitive all three of them were competitive in their last conferences and so um excited to have them here excited to cut our travel time down a little bit um you know not having to go eight hours in any direction to try and find good competition there is good competition right here like you said in our conference and so um i think they'll bring something a little different to the conference um in a competitive way and uh, our girls are excited to have them in here too just because it is a fresh look we do get um, another bid in the conference because of that addition of three new teams so that also is intriguing absolutely Um, let's talk about who who you have coming back Mm -hmm. who you're expecting big things from some of the incoming freshmen who you're bringing in Mm -hmm. so with seven graduating seniors um, and all of them saw quite a bit of time last year um, we actually brought in a very strong freshman class last year and um, two of them got to see starting time as setters and they'll be back and we're excited for both Tori and Bianca Um, and then you know Izzy Curcio should be making a pretty good debut we're excited for what she can bring to the table getting to learn under Masha and Mick um, for a season and um, just kind of getting back into the swing of things coming back from her injury but uh, we're excited to see what those three in that sophomore class can kind of do and step up um, leadership wise and athletically um, you know and then my junior class is very strong I've got my returning middles we've ad- added um, Sam she is a transfer from Ranger out of Texas and so um, she's a good addition for them so we'll have Nikki and Lou in the middle um, and then we've brought in two freshman outsides Uh, Maddie Perez and Sydney Pierce and uh, we're hoping they can kind of fill the roles of our outsides and continue to strive and just and just push that outside um, mindset that we've had here in this program last year we were a heavy right side middle um, offense and um, we're hoping to be a little even more spread this year um, across the board and see what we can do and bring in Sadie Edmonston back and Yovana um, as a senior coming in Um, strong defense, uh, strong serving capabilities. And they're definitely, before we left in the spring, very evenly matched. One of them better in serve receive, one of them better on defense. And so um, they're both very excited to get to kind of battle that out. I think they've got a mutual respect for one another. And um, at the end of the day, they're great teammates. Mm -hmm. And um, I've seen them both cheer each other on and, you know, when they're not on the court. So um, kind of excited to see what this team can put together because uh, we really didn't lose a lot of pieces based on what we already had in this program. Now we're just getting to kind of expand it a little bit. Well, is there anything I missed? Anything you want to talk about? Mm, at this point in time, I know we're all tired of staying at home. We're all tired of kind of doing our part, and there's a lot of unanswered questions. Um, and as much as I'm a planner, this has been tough because I've planned for seven different things. Um, you know, we we did have to cancel our camps, and we're hoping that in the fall we'll get to get some recruit camps 
back out here. We're hoping to get some of our 21 recruits on campus and uh, just, you know, keep pushing forward. At the end of the day, there is an end goal. We just don't know when that end goal is going to be approachable. So. Well, Coach, we're excited for your, for your upcoming season. Best thanks. of luck, and thank you for joining us. Yes, thanks for having me. And we're here with head men's basketball coach Jeremy Lewis. Coach Lewis, good to have you on. Um, it's been a crazy two-and-a-half month cycle yeah we you went say that the, the tornado and then the covid stuff what has that experience been like for you uh like you said i think you know crazy is a is a good word it's been uh you know pretty intense last couple of months here i think for uh for our community here um at cumberland and, and here in lebanon and middle tennessee as a whole um been really really interesting uh obviously that that tornado was really scary um you know, it, it hit so close to home here, uh, and we had a lot of people affected by it. Um, obviously, um, you know, I, and the, the biggest worry uh, that night and early that morning was, is everybody on campus okay? Um, uh, we had a lot of worried parents. I had a, I had a lot of phone calls and text messages uh, about 5 o'clock that morning uh, from parents wondering, you know, are their kids okay? Couldn't get a hold of them. And what happened with our guys was they, you know, they woke up during the storm, uh, and then when it when it went through and, and passed through, they went back to sleep. Mm -hmm. And so parents were calling the, the guys, and they were asleep. They couldn't get a hold of them. Then I start getting phone calls, and uh, you know we were doing everything we could to make sure we get a hold of guys, and make sure everybody's okay, uh, so that we could let parents know. Um, and of course, we and had a game scheduled for that night. We did, we did, uh, which which obviously we weren't, you know, weren't really able to to do anything uh, about that. And, and anytime that happens, you know, basketball kind of mm -hmm. has to be pushed to the side as 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 badly as we wanted to play and wanted to compete, um, you know. And uh, obviously, wish we could have played the game at home. Mm -hmm. uh, probably would have benefited us a little bit, but. Uh, you know, I think at that point it was us trying to rally as a community and, and, and uh, try to put pieces back together here uh, before we could go on and, and, and play basketball. Um, you know, so we, we transitioned from that storm to a completely different type of storm with all of the coronavirus and, co you know, COVID-19 and all that stuff. And it's to the point, I mean, I'm so tired of hearing COVID-19. Um, that's that's it's all you hear and, and all the talk is negative. It's, you know, all the, the media that you get about it, everything is negative. And even though I feel like we're kind of starting to trend in the right direction here, um, still uncertain about what's going to happen. Uh, when, when can our student athletes come back on campus? When can we start practices, uh, working people out? Um, those questions still remain kind of unanswered here uh, for us. And, you know, this whole, you know, Kyle, you know, you know, as well as I do, this whole deal is tough. Uh, you're trying to work from home. Uh, you, you know, you've, you're at home with your wife and your kids. And, you know, my wife is trying to work. I'm trying to work. We're trying to stay on top of some school stuff with the kids. Um, so the first couple of weeks was, was uh, you know, a big time adjustment. Uh, and I think a lot of people are going through the same thing. What does what recruiting look like for you this, this year? Because, of course, you guys have had to do some innovative things to yeah. talk to people and all uh, sorts of things. It's been different. Uh, I think that's for sure. And uh, uh, it was hard for me at first. I'm just a, I'm a people person, man. I, I, love, I love getting out. Uh, I love meeting people. I love talking to people face-to-face. -face. Uh, there's nothing like having, um, having a young man and his family here on campus uh, in your house or you're in their house there's you, you can't replace that you just can't um, you know obviously I feel like we have a good gauge on whether or not guys can play uh, you know judging some you know talent and all that stuff that that part I wasn't worried about it was the you've you've been communicating with with kids and their families and then it gets to that point of you're supposed to have them on campus well they can't come on campus you know um, so how do you get around that? And, you know, we've tried to be innovative and, and, and uh, you know, you've done a great job with that and uh, other people here administratively of, of trying to get us video and, and things like that, things that we can send to these kids and their families so that they can see campus, they can see our facilities. Um, and that, that has helped out a ton. Um, but, yeah, I mean, everything's, 
everything's virtual everything's online um, you're, you're doing zoom meetings and and facetiming with you know potential recruits and and their families and things like that so you're trying to get to know each other over the phone or you know like this yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and so there's only so much you can do like I said it's you know it's hard to replace that interaction person to person you know seeing somebody and shaking somebody's hand you know will we get to do that again mm -hmm. uh, you know I sure hope so uh, but yeah it's been it's been different but it's been fluid yeah. as well it, re it really really has uh, you know we've 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 signed some some guys and I think we've signed some good ones uh, great kids uh, good students, um, good players. Um, so it's you know as as odd as this off season uh, has been, so to speak. It's it has been productive for us. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about last year a little bit. Of course, you're graduating three seniors, mm -hmm. uh, Jalen Duke, who had one of the better careers seasons yeah. in Cumberland history this past season. Uh, Damari Davis and Brandon Levere. Mm -hmm. Talk about those guys a little bit and what they brought to the table, and then how your younger guys are going to fill in those those roles. Well, I'll start with Brandon. You know, Brandon was a kid, came in here, and when I took over the program, um, he was really just kind of sitting on the sidelines and was act, act, really acting as almost like a, a manager, mm -hmm. uh, so to speak. And um, he, he wanted to work out with us that spring after I took over. He worked out. Um, I just loved how competitive he was. Uh, had a little bit of pit bull mentality to him. Uh, wasn't afraid to defend. Um, could knock down an open shot. Uh, was strong with the ball. Um, you know, and he grew a ton. Uh, you know, these last two seasons really, really did. Uh, but he was a young man that was in a position to he could graduate and move on. And I think that's what he he wanted to do. He wanted to go on and and be able to graduate and then uh, kind of move on with life, so to speak, and and kind of start his. Uh, professional career mm -hmm. uh, working wise uh, Brandon is one of those young men he's always had a really good head on his shoulders um, he understood that it wasn't just about basketball for him here he was able to use basketball as a means to an end uh, in, in getting his degree uh, Damari Davis um, was a great addition for us this year as, as a one year kid um, great great young man great family, uh, very supportive family, and uh, um, was a great situation for us to bring him in. He, he, he added something we, that we needed uh, is that physical presence at the forward spot. Um, you know, I think if you were to sit him down right now and, and ask him about the season, he'd probably say that he wishes he could have been maybe a little more productive. And, and shot the ball a little bit better from the field. I will tell you this, it, it wasn't from a lack of trying or a lack of putting in work because uh, he was a he was a guy that was in this gym all the time. Um, him him and Jay Duke were two guys that if you heard a ball bouncing, you'd say it's either Damari or it's Jay Duke. Um, you know, those two guys were in here all the time. Um, and, that, you know, like you said, Jalen Duke had just – I don't – Outside of probably, you know, Brandon Springer's last year here, I don't know if there's been a better season uh, just individual numbers-wise uh, when you look at just the efficiency at which Jalen Duke played uh, this season uh, from overall field goal percentage. He led the nation in three-point field goal percentage. Um, you know, was a great free-throw shooter, um, big physical matchup problem that if you know you played him with a wing guy you know we could we could run him off some screens dive him into the post uh if you played a big guy on him he could take him out on the perimeter and face him up uh he was just a matchup nightmare and uh i wish like i wish like crazy i had him one more year <laughs> uh, you know we were me and mark were, were talking you know a couple weeks left in the season and i was like mark if we had him one more year he'd lead the country and score next year he, i mean I, I just think that he would he you know and uh, he was just a – he was a workhorse, you know, uh, led us in minutes. I probably played him too many minutes. Um, but I don't think he was going to complain about that. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, just uh, he, he was a great influence on the younger guys in our program. We had a lot of young guys this year. Uh, and I, I can remember a point this season where I grabbed two or three of our freshmen, I think like the second week of practice. And I told them, you know, the guys right here going through some stuff, 
And I, I said, look, I said, if there's anybody that you're going to watch, you watch that guy. Watch him. You watch him every single day. He's going to be in the gym every day. I said, you watch how he walks around campus. You watch how he interacts and talks to people. I said, that young man right there is who you need to follow. Um, so he was a great influence on these guys. And, and we're really, really pleased that we're going to get to keep him around as a graduate assistant uh, starting in the fall. So uh, it will be a great deal for, for us. Uh, be good for him to finish up his master's. Um, but great kid, uh, great young man, great family, uh, and was a, a heck of a player. Yeah. I don't think there's any question about it. Uh, first team all conference, you know, honorable mention, all American. Um, if our record is better, he probably ends up on on yeah. probably a, a second team all American. Um, but you know, that's 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 just kind of part of it. Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of the politics that go into it. Uh, but you'd be hard-pressed to find a, a better player at that position. Yeah. I think across the country he was uh, – yeah, he, I think he was one of the best to do it this season. Mm -hmm. So Let's talk about some of the kids you're bringing in this year. Mm -hmm. I know you guys have – a few transfers you're bringing in. Where are yeah. they going to fit in? How are they going to fit into the puzzle? Yeah, well, this uh, this this year has been a little different for us. You know, we really sat on um, high school kids uh, the last two years, um, and and this year was a little bit different for us. We had so many young guys. That, you know, now we could sit back and say, okay, let's let's go get a few transfers. Um, you know, we've got a couple junior college kids coming in. Um, uh, Jaleel Nails was the first kid that we signed, uh, six four, six five, uh, two guard. He's from Albany, New York. Um, uh, actually, you know, started off at the Division One level, um, left after his freshman year, and then was at a uh, junior college in Texas. Um, really, really good program. Uh, really good kid. Uh, can really score the ball. Can really shoot it. Um, you know, he averaged. I want. I want to say a little over 19 a game uh, his sophomore year. In college, um, uh, Devon Banks is a uh, a, a six one six two long uh, point guard combo guard uh, from Oakland, California. Um, coming in here, uh, shot forty percent from three this season. Uh, was the uh, defensive player of the year in their conference out there. Um, gosh, uh, who else do we have? Uh, Dwayne um, McClendon. Uh, is from Gary, Indiana. Um, he was at a junior college out in California, uh, an all-conference player out there, averaged about 16 and a half, 17 points a game, uh, shot over 40% from the field, uh, shot 40% from the three. Uh, and he's a kid we're really, really excited about, especially with, you know, Jay Duke going out. Yeah. This is a kid coming in that's, you know, that 6'5", six 6'5"-ish, five, six five you know, he's listed at 6'6", six six, um, long, skilled, uh, can you know? I look at him as a wing. We could play him at the four position if we want to play four guards together. And he gives you size, and he gives you really good skill. Um, he's got a really nice stroke, can really shoot the ball. Uh, he's got a really good feel for the game. Uh, he's one of those kids when you when you watch him on tape, uh, he's always ready to play. He's you're never gonna catch him when he catches the ball. You're never gonna see him not ready to do something with it. Um, and that that gets me excited. You know, one of the one of the issues we had this year was having enough guys on the floor that could knock down an open shot. Um, you know, Aaron Ridley was a guy for us this year. Aaron's got all the potential in the world. He's 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 talented. Um, it's you'd be hard to find five guys in our league that were more talented than Aaron. Mm -hmm. uh, Aaron just wasn't efficient this year, and that's where he's got to make a jump in his senior year. He's got to be efficient. Well, if you're going to be efficient, you got to get your rear end in this gym and put in the work. It's you can't just get it done during practice. Yeah. You know. Now, when it's time to practice and it's time to play, he's going to give you everything that he has. But you, there has to be a commitment level outside of that, and that's what I think we're getting with some of these, some of the transfers that we've signed. They got they love being in the gym. They love to be in here. Um, and then we we've got a a young man, uh, Demonte Dixon. That'll come in here as a six-eight forward, uh, very skilled. Uh, Demonte he sat out he sat out of school this year, um, so he he committed to Illinois State out of high school. He went to Summit High School, um, highly recruited, uh, basically all mid-major Division ones mm -hmm. uh, that were on him. He he committed to Illinois State, coach that recruited him. 
uh, left and took the head coaching job at TSU. DeMonte decided to go to junior college for a year. He's not a JUCO kid. He decided to go to junior college. He went to Walter State and played a season, uh, had a good year, uh, committed to Evansville, uh, and then when it came time to go, just didn't want to leave home. And instead of going to Evansville, he, he stayed at home. He stayed at home this year. Um, so, and, and, you know, we, we, we got him committed in April, uh, got him signed a few weeks ago. Um, and we're, we're really excited, really excited about him. He's a three-year kid, uh, great size, great skill. Uh, again, comes from a good supportive family. Um, you know, he's, he's, he has a relationship uh, with Jalen Duke uh, and their family, and that helped us in his recruitment. Um, so, like I said, you know, we, we sat and, and we did focus on some transfers. Um, and, and, you know, these guys are going to be able to come in um, and, and really, really help us, uh, we feel. Uh, but we did get a, you know, we got a high school kid in Roger Meadows uh, from York Institute. Uh, and, and I think Roger's got a chance to be a good player. Uh, he's got a really good feel, high IQ. He's got great size at the guard position. He can play on or off the ball. Uh, uh, play the point there uh, at 6'4". Um, so, you know, he's, he's physical. He can shoot it. Uh, and it comes from a really, really good program. Um, and, you know, as, as many of those kids as you can get, you feel like that, that's going to help you moving down the road. Um, you know, he's like any other freshman, though. He'll have to get used to the speed of the game and make that adjustment. Uh, but I, but I think that he will. Uh, and then I'm excited. I'm really excited about our young guys coming back. Uh, T.J. Stargell, uh, Jalen Negrone, uh, and then obviously Isaac Stevens, uh, and hopefully Asher Bloom can have a season where he's where he's healthy. Isaac as well, where they can get through a full season being healthy. Um, but really excited about how those guys come back here. Uh, they've been putting in a lot of work. I can tell you that much. Um, you know, working out. Uh, we they get together on Zoom a few times a week and work out together mm -hmm. um, and, and uh, you know Mark has done a great job of, of keeping those guys engaged while all this stuff has gone on um, so you know we're hoping like crazy that we get to get these guys back on campus yeah. in August and, and can get to work with them um, you know I miss being on the floor with them I miss seeing them this spring uh, it, it, it kills you as a coach not being able to be around your players um, you know, because we're in this, you know, it, to me, it's it's always been about the relationships. Uh, and that's what, you know, and then obviously that competition, you know, you have to be addicted to competition to want to do this. Um, so I, I've, I, I miss the competition, but I miss being around my guys. And uh, hopefully we can have them here uh, sooner rather than later. Coach, let's talk about the conference a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you've been a head coach in the men's side now for two years. Yeah. What have you seen from this conference? Of course, I think it's one of the toughest in yeah. the, in the nation. Yeah. What do you guys have to do to win on a on a nightly basis in this league? Oh, it's just consistency. I think um, that number one, um, and it's kind of, you know the each of the last two seasons has been a little bit different. Um, I felt like two seasons ago we could score. Uh, scoring wasn't an issue. It was being able to come up with stops in the last four minutes of a game. Uh, this season was the opposite. We could defend, uh, and it was being able to score baskets the last three minutes of a game, uh, and especially when teams said, okay, we're going to sit on Duke. We're just going to sit on him and take him away, and we're going to hold him, push him, grab him, not let him get to the ball, whatever we got to do. Um, and, the, and other teams in conference play did a really good job of that uh, down the stretch of games, uh, and we couldn't consistently find another guy or two that we could put the ball in their hands and they could score it or make a play for somebody else to get a shot um, you know so uh, I think the like I said the biggest deal is that consistency on the offensive end uh, and that's what I'm seeing more and more you got to be I keep telling Mark like you have to be able to score to win consistently in this league um, you know and I think when I was the coach on the women's side our identity was we're going to guard the fool out of you and we'll figure out how to score enough baskets. Um, I think that's got, it's different on the men's side here, and I've, I've learned that pretty quickly. Uh, you know, you got to be able to score like crazy and then figure out how to get stops down the stretch of a game. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it, it's been a big uh, adjustment for me, a uh, huge learning curve. Um, it's the best league in the country, I think, 
because there's not a bad team, there are no bad teams in our league. Every team is good. Uh, and that's the, you know, you could take any team out of our league and put it in another league, and that team's probably going to finish in the top four in that conference. Uh, I, I'd say that and feel extremely confident about it. Um, you know, if you took a, a team out of our league and put them in another league, the coaches in that league probably wouldn't be pretty excited at all mm -hmm. about that. Um, just because of how competitive this conference is, um, it's almost laughable. Yeah. I mean, I've people ask me, I just start I like you know, you brought it up, I start giggling. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it's the, it's it's the real deal. Um, but as a as, as a competitive person, you want it to be that way um, because it's it only makes you better as a coach. It only makes you better, uh, and it drives you harder and harder. Um, and you know, I, I'm always telling these guys, you just you keep swinging the axe, you keep swinging it, you keep swinging it. Sooner or later, that tree is gonna fall down. Uh, and that's where we are with this program right now. You know, we we had more wins than the season before. And that's great. Uh, you know, the goal for our for our team this year, my goal, it was winning overall record. That's that's what where we wanted to get. Uh, and we let a few games kind of slip through our grasp this year. Um, that could have really dictated where we ended up in conference play um, record-wise. So, um, But, you know, I, I think consistency, having a consistent roster together, uh, that's why I keep saying I'm excited to bring these the guys back that were here, having that continuity of guys that have played together. Uh, and then you add a few new pieces on top of that. Uh, and then how quickly can we mesh? Here's the best part. Moving, We'll move from this upcoming season – to the following season, and we may only lose one guy. Yeah. I mean, we we may have a, a we'll have a 14 or 15 man roster, and we potentially with the with 15 guys can say, oh, we're gonna have 14 of them back. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's exciting moving forward, and and I think that's been the the big goal, trying to it's we're we're trying to build a program. Um, we're not trying to have it's not a flash in the pan have one great season and then start over from scratch again. We're trying to build a program. I keep saying consistency. It's hard to be consistent if there's if you're turning the roster over every year, every other year. Um, so we're, we're trying to do it. We're trying to do it the right way uh, with the right kids. Um, you know, Cumberland is, uh, you know, it's a different place. Um, you know, the, the, they have to be committed to class and all that. Um, you know, it's we, we can't hide. We can't hide guys. And, you know, a PE major or something like that, that's just we don't do that here. Yeah. Um, these kids come and they know they've got to be committed to their books and they've got to want to excel in the classroom. Um, and, and, and we're trying to push them that way uh, consistently. Well, Coach, is there anything else you'd like to talk about while we got you? I can talk all day. I know. You know that. <laughs> anything you want to bring up? <laughs> No, I mean, I th really, the, the biggest thing for me, Kyle, I just I miss our guys. I, th I, that's been the hardest part. I think that's the hardest part for any coaches when you take – I mean, this is the thing that we love to do the most uh, is be out here on, on the court with our players. And, you know, ironically, it's the thing when you're coaching, it's actually at this level the thing you get to do the least amount. Uh, but it's, it's the thing that I miss the most. I, I'm, I miss having guys be in the office and just messing around with them. Uh, I miss I miss yelling at TJ. Uh, he's gonna watch this interview, I'm sure. TJ Stargell, man, I miss you like crazy. Uh, I miss uh, you know, and I you know what? You miss being yelled at by Coach Lou. I'm telling you right now, you miss it. I guarantee you, you miss it. Uh, but no, I miss I miss these guys. I miss being around them. I can't wait to get them back. Uh, see them on the floor, running up and down. Uh, I get goosebumps thinking about it, man. All right, Coach. Well, we appreciate it, and best of luck next year. Right, we'll Kyle. talk again soon. Appreciate it, man. Yeah.